A neuroscientist from the University of Michigan has come out and said that research suggests solitary confinement may dramatically alter the physical structure of uh, a human's brain after just a couple of days. They say the lack of physical interaction with the natural world, the lack of social interaction, and the lack of touch and visual stimulation can actually shrink the hippocampus in the brain. That's the part of the brain responsible for memory, spatial orientation, and control of emotions. So a man who had his conviction overturned and was in solitary confinement spoke about this, and he said that his eyesight and physical orientation are permanently impaired as a result of being in solitary confinement. Quote, My geography is way off. I get lost sometimes in my own neighborhood. I believe that this is a result of my solitary confinement. Other symptoms include extreme paranoia, self-mutilation, hypersensitivity to sound, light, and touch, severe cognition dysfunction, rage, and hyperviolent tendencies. So this is all stuff that happens as a direct result of people being locked up in solitary confinement. Now, you might be thinking, well, what's the legal status of that in the U.S. right now? Well, it's unconstitutional to do solitary confinement for the mentally ill, and you can't do it indefinite, and you can't do it unreviewed for other prisoners. But uh, you could still do it, and they do a lot of it. In fact, I have some numbers here. At least 80,000 U.S. prisoners are held in solitary confinement by some estimates, and it is frequently used not to segregate dangerous prisoners, but as a means of social control or mental health treatment. In California, more than 500 inmates have reportedly been kept in confinement for 10 to 28 years. So what we're dealing with here, I mean, think about it, man. What we're dealing with here is something that can actually change the structure of your brain. That's how much it affects the chemicals, is that it can actually affect the structure of your brain. Man, that's wild. Look, uh, you guys know me. I'm a very simple person. <laughs> and when it comes to uh, the Eighth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, you're supposed to have a protection from cruel and unusual punishment, okay? Look, regardless of your personal feelings or my personal feelings on the death penalty, or even specific cases where we think the death penalty should be used because the evidence is overwhelming and some guy's a real asshole who killed multiple people or whatever... Uh, that, that should be unconstitutional. The death penalty should be unconstitutional because it is, by definition, cruel. If you don't think killing somebody is cruel, you are an idiot. Uh, and it's, of course, by definition, unusual because a majority of the countries on the planet have abolished it. So it fits the definition, uh, and it should be unconstitutional, but it's still constitutional. Well, that's ridiculous. And also, look, man... Uh, believe me, I have feelings, I want to have revenge and vengeance against certain types of criminals all the time, and in fact, I get, a lot of progressives and liberals get mad at me when I talk about certain uh, things because I'm supposedly too hard on some kinds of criminals, right? But look, this is too far. It's too far. This is clearly a form of torture. You clearly can literally drive somebody insane if you keep them in solitary confinement. I'm not saying I don't want to do the opposite extreme with the, you know, really bad criminals like they do with, with uh, Anders Breivik in Norway where he has a PS2 and he's got three rooms, one for a workout, one for studying, one for, you know, playing the video games and he can communicate all the time with people via letters and... And he can go for daily walks, and he asks for a view in his room and a better chair. Like, look, there's a happy middle ground, is my point here. In the U.S., we are too barbaric, we are too Neanderthalic, we are too primitive in our criminal justice system, because all we focus on is punishment. And oftentimes, the people who are supposed to be upholding the law break the law, whether it's us doing torture, or the death penalty, or this. We are the ones, it's, it's the, the system that's breaking the law here, and being ridiculous. And we're becoming the devils that we're trying to avoid. That's the problem here. So the U.S. is too draconian and it, it, too focused on punishment for our criminal justice system. Other places may be too focused on rehabilitation. 
But so it's a mix of both that you need. It depends on the crime and it depends on the situation. Some people require just punishment. Some people require just rehabilitation. And probably most require a mix of both. Should be punishment and rehabilitation. But here's what's for sure. There should be no more of this insane solitary confinement garbage because that is torture and torture is illegal and unconstitutional.